Hello students, it's Dr. Sansom here. I wanted to make a quick video to review a couple of things that we did in class, um, but you might wanna see again. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about sig figs and scientific notation. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is significant figures. So significant figures matter. That's why they're called significant, uh, because they're measured. So this is a way to represent the precision of a measurement. How, how well are we able to measure that? And uh, essentially, if you're counting significant, there's three things we're gonna talk about. The first thing is counting them, okay? When you're counting them, you're gonna want to count everything that's not zero. So if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all of those count as sig figs. And two, then you're gonna have to be careful with the zeros. We've got uh, different types of zeros. So sometimes we can have a number like 203 and it's got a zero right here. So we know the two and the three are gonna be significant because they're not zero. But this zero is stuck in the middle, we can call it captive, and that counts. So this thing has three sig figs. Um, we can have also trailing zeros, like if we have the number 400. So these zeros here, these are really placeholder And these guys are not going to count. So this number has one sig fig. I can change that, of course, if I were to add a decimal point at the end, if I write 400 decimal point. Now, these numbers count because they're measured. The decimal point tells me they were measured and they do count. This is also representing uncertainty. If I say 400, that means somewhere between three and 500. And if I say 400 decimal point, that means somewhere between 399 and 401. So where the significant digits are also represents the uncertainty. Okay, we can also have another kind of placeholder zero. And that's like if you have a number that comes that's a decimal point, but it's a very small number. So we have all of these zeros here, all four zeros, and those are also placeholder zeros. And they do not count. And so this number would have three sig figs. If I add an additional zero onto the end, then that one was one that I measured. I wouldn't have put it there if I didn't measure it. So this one at the very end after a decimal point is measured and that one's gonna count. So this number would have four sig figs. Okay, now that we can count the sig figs, we need to think about how we do addition and subtraction. So next, task is to look at addition and subtraction. For addition and subtraction, there's a different rule than for multiplication and division, so that's why I'm going to talk about it separately. For addition and subtraction, we can have a number, let's say, for example, we have 105, and then we're going to add a number to it, 0.021. Now, if you type it in your calculator, you're going to get 105.021. Makes sense, right? But we want to know, does this accurately represent what we were able to measure or the uncertainty in our measurement? And when we look at the 105, we have uncertainty here in the ones place. Here, our uncertainty is in the thousands place. So which one has more uncertainty? It's gonna be this one. 
with uncertainty in the ones place. So we have to ask ourselves, if we're not sure if it's between 104 or 106, are we gonna be able to tell if I add 0 0.021? And the answer is absolutely not. So when we add these together, what we do is we sort of line them up where the decimal point would be in the same place. And we're gonna add them together. And then wherever, in this case, this is the last digit or the smallest place where we have some uncertainties. What I mean is rather, it's the largest amount of uncertainty, the last place going left to right where we have that uncertainty, right, um, for that number. And we're going to look at this and we're going to say, okay, I need to round this off and I need to round it to the ones place because that's where my uncertainty is. So I'm going to get 105. This is kind of like saying, gosh, the store is a mile down the street, but you have to go a mile and then walk five more steps. It doesn't matter if you have five more steps because you have to go about a mile anyway. Okay, uh, that's the rule for addition and subtraction. Next rule is for multiplication and division. For multiplication and division, we are going to think about how many sig figs we have. So um, I'm going to do easy math here. So let's say I have five times 10 decimal point. Okay, this number has one sig fig. This number has two sig figs. If I multiply them together, I get 50. So the question is, do I need a decimal point because it's going to be 50 decimal point like my 10? Or do I just leave it how it is and it has one sig fig? The way we decide is we look for the smallest number of sig figs in that case in this case, it's one sig fig, and our answer should also have one sig fig. Same as the smallest number of sig figs we had in the original one. Okay, those are all of our rules for significant figures. Now I'm gonna talk about scientific notation, and then I'm gonna talk about how you put those together. So scientific notation is a way to represent very large and small numbers. Um, more easily without having all those zeros that we have to keep track of. So the scientific notation, if I have a number like 3.45 times 10 to the third, this number right here is called the coefficient and this is called the exponential term. And the reason we do this is because this guy has all the sig figs. And the exponential term has all of the placeholding zeros. When we put numbers into scientific notation or take them out of scientific notation, we want to pay attention to the exponents. So like if we have 10 to the third, that's a positive exponent. And that indicates we have a large number greater than one. And if we have 10 to the minus third, that's a negative exponent. And that indicates a small number, less than one. So if I have 3.45 times 10 to the third, I can do 3.45 times 10 to the third is the same as 1,000. And I end up with 3,450. That's taking it out of scientific notation. If I have a number like this and I want to move it back into scientific notation, the rule is that the decimal point in my coefficient always has to be with one digit to the left of it. If there's two digits to the left of it, we didn't do it the right way. So in this case, I know for 3450, this is where my decimal point would be. I have to move it three spaces to the left so that gives me my 3.45 times 10 to the third. Okay, if I have a small number like 3.45 times 10 to the minus three, that's the same as 3.45 times 0 0.001. And if I do that math out, I end up with 0 0.00345. This is also like moving my decimal point 
just the other direction. If I have 0 0.00345, I need to move it one, two, three places. That's how I get my 3.45 times 10 to the minus three. It's easier for me to remember this positive exponents are large numbers and negative exponents are small numbers than to remember which way, left or right, you're gonna move the decimal point because that's confusing. People can't even tell their left and rights when they're like walking down the street. So how are you gonna remember that for your decimal points? So I like to remember positive versus negative exponents. Okay, that's basically it. Our scientific notation is going to help consolidate all of our sig figs. So when we see things written in scientific notation, we know which digits are significant. This is especially helpful if we have something like the number 5,000, but let's say we were able to measure to the tenths place. So we know that this digit here is significant. We want to communicate that this has three sig figs. And writing the number 5,000 doesn't do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to write it in scientific notation. So I move the decimal point over, so I'll get 5.00. I'm only including the digits that are significant times 10 to the third. So this is a way for me to communicate numbers when it otherwise would be difficult to do it because it, it's not an easy way to like put the decimal point in there and make it, make it clear what, which digits are significant. Okay, that's our sig figs and scientific notation.